An estimated 1 in 10 people in Japan play it. In a market valued at $200 billion a year. There's scarcely a street across the country that doesn't have it, and you'll often hear it before you see it. Loud, confusing, and a national obsession, this is Pachinko. If you've never set foot in Japan, there's a good chance you'll have never have heard of Pachinko. I had no idea what it was until my first day in Japan when I accidentally stumbled into a pachinko parlour in central Tokyo and was subsequently deafened by the noise of hundreds of shrieking machines and thousands of ball bearings being blasted in every direction. I think the best way to describe pachinko is it's part arcade game, it's part gambling and it's part noise. It's just, oh, it's just so unbelievably noisy. But why is pachinko popular? And how do you play it? I don't really have the answers to these questions. I'm awful at it. Uh, so today I've enlisted the help of a good friend who is a retired veteran of Pachinko and he's going to share with us the secrets to success. Isn't that right, Natsuki? Hello everyone! Let's Pachinko. Let's go. Pachinko has its roots in Chicago in the early 20th century when gaming manufacturers started selling the Corinth game, a children's version of Bagatelle Pinball. In the 1920s, the game made it to Asia, becoming a hit in Japan, where it became a staple of Japanese sweet shops as a means of getting children to stick around and stuff themselves with more candy. And it soon got the nickname of Pachi Pachi, an onomatopoeia referring to the noisy, popping and snapping sounds of the game. In the 1930s, the game found a more mature audience, when the board was turned upright and made larger. However, World War II began, and most of the machines were scrapped for metal. For a time, the game disappeared, and didn't re-emerge until the late 1940s. But it wasn't until after World War II that Pachinko became really popular, with a surplus of metal ball bearings in factories across the country, and an entertainment sector desperate to be filled. It wasn't long before Pachinko took the country by storm. Oh, come on, really? Typically in most pachinko parlours, each ball represents 4 yen, with players depositing 500 yen into the machine in return for 125 balls. For the first 30 years of pachinko, it was very mechanical. It all depended on the amount of force you put on the lever, which would dictate the direction and force put on the ball bearing. And using the lever, you launch them around the pachinko machine with the aim of getting them into a pocket known as the start chucker. In the simplest games, this would lead to a jackpot and a flood of ball bearings which flow down into your container at the bottom. And at the end of the game, you redeem the balls for prizes. The more ball bearings you have, the bigger the prize. And then in the 1980s, pachinko machines became electronic gaming devices and things got a lot more colourful, a lot more noisy and a lot more chaotic. Pachinko has since morphed into a slightly more complex game. The aim of landing balls into the start chucker remains, however doing so opens up more holes to aim for to increase your jackpot, and triggering some rather crazy looking mini games which are more reminiscent of arcade machines. But there's more to Pachinko than just a flood of ball bearings and a dizzying array of colours. It is by far Japan's biggest gambling market. Gambling in Japan is technically banned, however pachinko parlours have found a way around it. At the end of a game you receive a coupon or ticket, depending on the size of your winnings. You can then leave the pachinko parlour and head around the back of the building or down a nearby street to a neighbouring counter where you're able to redeem the ticket for a cash reward. And because it's in a separate building, the gambling laws are easily circumnavigated. I remember the first time I heard about this loophole on how comical and ridiculous it sounded. But when you're talking about a market worth $200 billion or 4% of Japan's GDP, well, that's a lot of government tax revenue, isn't it? Pachinko parlours are typically difficult to film in, with the sort of strict policies you'd find in a casino. But we've been given access to film inside a pachinko cafe in Takayama in Gifu, 
in the heart of the Japanese Alps, with the colourful noisy machines stand in contrast to the town's traditional Edo-era streets. The Ebis Cafe is part of a growing movement to throw off the image of pachinko being a gambler's sport. Here you can't redeem your winnings for money, but you can turn them into prizes like food, sweets, toys or local sake. They're keen to get the message out that pachinko isn't about money, it is genuinely a fun, exciting, fast-paced game. And what better way to see it in action than by finding out if Natsuki the pachinko veteran lives up to his reputation of being a pro. We're not gambling here today because gambling is wrong, mainly because I always lose. But what we are doing is giving Natsuki 1,500 pachinko balls oh. and 30 minutes. Heavy. And we're going to see how many balls he can turn this into. If you can get 6,000 pachinko balls in 30 minutes, we can win the prize. Takayama's number one sucker. Takayama sucker? Takayama yes. sucker. Yeah. Natsuki, can you do it? I can do it. Yeah? Do you have balls? I have balls. Absolutely. Go win me some sake. Yeah. I mean us. us oh, sake, us sake. Some sake. I want a sake. Watching Natsuki play, I can understand how the game can be addictive, with the intermittent waves of ball bearings pouring down into the player's inventory. Even if I understand the basics of Pachinko, I'd be lying if I said I completely understood what's going on. So Natsuki's just done his first machine, and he seemed to win quite a few, quite a few balls. I don't really know how he did it, I'm not sure even he knows, but there seemed to be some kind of technique. Why do you think pachinko is so popular in Japan? What is it about Japanese culture and pachinko that go hand in hand? When most people think of Pachinko, they think of noisy, crowded rooms filled with smoke. However, to counter that, the Ebis Cafe has a no smoking policy. They have a restaurant area where you can sit, socialise, and eat and drink your winnings. And for foreign customers bewildered by how to play, there's even detailed instructions on how to learn and master Pachinko. As Natsuki hits the halfway mark in his quest to win me, I mean, uh, uh, us, some, some sake, I sit down with Keske Shindo, the manager of the store, who reveals perhaps the biggest change to conventional pachinko parlors. This こう、so, we're now counting out Natsuki's winnings. In two buckets. Three thousand four hundred and eighty-eight over twice the amount started. Two ways. One thousand five hundred and finished on three thousand four hundred and eighty-eight. Well done. Thank you. Yeah. Nice one. Cody. Yeah. Bye bye. Yeah. Sake time. 
Well done, Natsuki. Come by. Cheers. Come by. We did well. We did so well. Mm. Really good job. Mm. Winning taste. Winning taste. It does mm -hmm. taste like victory. The taste Victor's. of teamwork. Good job, man. Good job. Teamwork is your name. Not teamwork. Well, it turns out Pachinko isn't as much of a mindfuck as I expected it to be, and Natsuki lived up to his word of being a glorified Pachinko veteran. To learn more about Japan's biggest game, or to find out where we played, you can get all the details in the description box below. For now, guys. Great, 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 great. As I'm always, in, I'm in, I'm in it. many thanks for watching. Mm. We'll see you next time. Quick, Natsuki, drink it. Mm. Got, you've got to get back in there and get some more balls. Ah, oh, good to see you. You just okay. shorted a whole cup of sake. Oh, you're not gonna have a good night, mate. I'm drunk here. <laughs> I'm drunk here. Uh, the confessions of a drunkard. What a way to end the video.